morning, good morning, good morning. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Joseph E. Long, the senior pastor of the Second We Home Missionary Baptist Church. We're welcoming you to our morning live service. God, the power of God is here. The word of God is being preached. And we're asking you to come in and be a part of what God is doing. We're excited about the move of God for our in-person service. And though you're not able to be here, you are still able to tune in with yes. us on Facebook and YouTube. So join us that we might serve God and that you might get this awesome word that is going forth. God is trying to do something special in your life. Can't you hear the praise and worship? Come on, join us in the sanctuary. God bless you. Every hand in the room should be lifted for what he has done. If we had 10,000 hands, we couldn't raise them enough. And every voice in the place should be raised. Grace, if we had one million voices, we couldn't praise them enough. He had to pay the price to give us life, and with all that's within, we owe this praise to Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, we owe this praise to Him.
This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's try it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. I may not be feeling well, but this is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says we should rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad to be here this morning? Somebody just need to tell God thank you. Tell them thank you. Don't ask them for nothing. I double dare you. Just tell them thank you. Many people have died, but Lord, I'm still here, so thank you. Many people have had heart attacks. Many people had strokes, but I'm still here. So God, we thank you. We give God glory. We give him honor and praise. We thank God for you, 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 and especially you. We thank God for our social media church, our social media ministry as well. We thank God for everyone that's a part of the Second Sweet Home Church family. How many of you know you don't have to be here to be here? Amen. As long as you're here with us in spirit, and if you're not here in body, be here in both prayer and in finance. Amen? Amen. We're moving uh, forward. We're moving right along. We thank God again for everyone here. We thank God for our pastor and our co-pastor. Let's give them a hand. Thank God for their lives. Amen. We're moving forward. We're going to ask now if Minister Mays can get ready to uh, prepare to give us the scripture. And after which our own co-pastor is going to come with prayer. Amen. Amen. It's such a good day. The sun is shining, as the old folks say, on both sides of the street. And God is here. You're here. And God is up to something. I want you to be able to come to church. And I want you to come to church with the spirit, Sister Reader, with the spirit of expectation. The only reason we go to work, Brother Mark, is because on Friday, we expect something from our employer. The only reason you go home at night is because you want a place to sleep and you want a warm covering. You want a roof over your head. It's the same thing when it comes to the house of God. Don't come into God's house and don't expect God to do a miracle in your life. If you're here, you might as well have church. Amen. We're going to receive Minister Mays as he gets ready to come with the scripture. Somebody say amen. We're going to do something different. Everybody's standing. Everyone's standing. Let us rest on our feet for prayer, for uh, the scripture and for prayer. Amen. Hebrews 10. 24 and 25, New Living Translations. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to act of love and good works. 25 says, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Amen. Stay remain standing. Lord everyone. Praise the Lord everyone. How many of you know that that prayer changes things? How many of y'all know you, if it wasn't for your prayers you wouldn't be here today? We serve an awesome God. We serve a God that's able to do all things but fail. And right now it's praying time. Touch your, well don't touch him. Tell your neighbors it's praying time. It's praying time. We can't do nothing without prayer. And one thing I learned, prayer changes things. Amen. So in asking everyone, just put your mind on what, how good God has been to you first of all. Then think about somebody who's going through right now. We have sickness everywhere. We have people in the hospital. We have people that's still getting the COVID. Just let us put our mind on somebody else other than ourselves. When we look at others, then God will look at us. He will do what we need him to do. So right now we're asking everyone just bow your heads and let's go into a word of prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. 
We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. Lord, if it had not been for you, we wouldn't be here today. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins, knowing sins and the ones that we don't know about. Lord, we ask that you touch all the sick all over the world, all the ones that's in the hospital that the doctors have given up on. But we know a doctor that's able to speak a word and a healing will take place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you touch everyone that's in the sanctuary right now. Touch all of their family members. Lord, right now we need your protection like never before. Lord, we plead the blood of all of our family that no hurt, harm, and danger would come to them. And Lord, we ask that you look down upon our pastor today. Touch his body in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord, we ask that you look down upon all your children, the ones that's in the military right now. Lord, let no weapon form that gives them prosper. Lord, we ask that you speak peace in the land right now. Healing in the land right now. Lord, right now we ask that you touch all the children. Lord, right now the ones that can't get the vaccine. Lord, right now we ask that you touch them. Touch all of their family, families. Touch their household right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask all these and healing in Jesus name it is so amen and thank God give God a hand clap of praise amen right now we're going to have our offering and after that we're going to have a song before our pastor come out how many of y'all need a word ain't enough hands with them how many of y'all need a word from God today Hallelujah. We thank God for what he's doing in Second Sweet Home. I'm not feeling my best today, but I'm asking all of you to continue to hold Pastor and myself up in prayer. If you know anything about the devil, you know he's coming after the one at the top first. Amen. So we're asking that you continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for all of you. And all the ones that's at home that's going to be watching, we continue to pray for each and every one of you. And we thank God for you today. Amen and thank God. offering time. Now's the time where we all can take place. We thank you for being here and we thank you for tuning in. There are two forms of giving now that we are open. Amen. The first is you can text GIVE at 313-855-5014. As you see on the screen, it's 313-855-5014. If you are in the sanctuary and you filled out an envelope, we're trying to cut down the interaction with cash and touching things, so if you can, you can text yours as well, and just fill out an envelope and turn it in as you walk out in the vestibule. There is a basket out there that you can put your envelope in so we'll know where the money is going. Again, that number for the people in the sanctuary as well is 313-855-5014. For we all know that it takes money to run anything. The way the economy is, the way the world is set up, it takes money to run any and everything. You can't do nothing for free nowadays. So we ask that you continue to partner with us, continue to see just because the church is open don't mean stop giving. 
Amen. We need it even more because now we have to clean more. Now we have to sanitize more. We have to do more things. People have to come out. So we're asking that you continue to partner with us, continue to pray for us. Also, as the world is opening up, that means you're going to be more vulnerable. Be cautious in everything that you do. We know the mandates are being lifted. The masks are coming off. But please be safe. There are people that are fully vaccinated that are still catching the COVID. Please be aware of it. And if you want to come to church, there are two form of ways that you can register. We're still doing registration even though everything is being lifted. We want to know who's going to be here and everything has to be done in decency and in order. The web address to register you have up until Friday, 8 p.m. to register. And that's secondsweethome.org. Just go to secondsweethome.org and click on the link that says register for church and let us know who's going to be here. Or you can simply call 313-306-6195. We look forward to seeing you and be blessed. Pastor Joseph E. Long, hallelujah. How many of you have a yes on your spirit today? Yes. How many of you guys want to tell God yes to whatever the situation, whatever the problem? Just give God a yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
Is there anybody in here really ready to praise the God? Can y'all help me say it one more time? Say yes. Yes to your will. at your neighbor and say he's an awesome God he is worthy of the praise the glory and the honor there is nobody somebody say nobody like Jesus come on come on say it one more time there is nobody like the Lord when I think about where he has brought me from, when I look back over my life, Minister Mays, I can't do nothing but wave my hand. I can't do nothing but say, Lord, I thank you. Is there anybody to thank him today? Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God, and he is worthy to be praised. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. It's just an honor and a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, somebody give God a great big hand clap of praise. We invite you in, those of you that are tuning in with us via social media. We thank God for you. We ask that you would tag and share this worship experience with somebody that you know that is going through. And we're thankful to God today for all of you that are here in person. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. We are moving forward in our re-entry and, and 
praise God and we're blessing God that we're coming back a few at a time, but we're coming back. And we thank God that we want you to feel safe when you come into the house of God. And so we have did and taken all the precautions to make it comfortable and safe for you as you enter into the sanctuary. And I'm just blessing God to be able to look out and see your beautiful faces. We're thankful to God for our visitors that are sharing with us, that are enjoying this worship experience with God. We thank God for those that are tuned in. And we ask you to be encouraged. God is not marked. For he is still, look at your neighbor, say, he is still in control. Amen. As I was preparing to get ready for worship this morning and on last night, my legs and my feet swolled up so big. I, I laid up and I looked at my legs and my feet and I called my doctor. I talked to my doctor several days ago and the, the medication, thank God for Minister Mays, that they had me on. He said it reacts kind of funny in the sun and, and it, when the heat is up real high. And so I looked at myself swelling up, so I said, well, I ain't taking it this morning. Praise God, because I got to preach. And you, those of you that came in, you seen me walking around with my house shoes on. And Deacon Ivory said, Pastor, go on preaching. Praise God. And if I had to, I would. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Because I have learned in my walk with God that I'll let nothing stop me from serving God. Is there anybody else in here that feel like I feel today that you're not going to let nothing, there's nothing that the devil can do to you that will stop you from serving God? Hallelujah. Because you know if he can get you, he'll get you. And if he can stop you, he'll stop you. And so we must be content with the things of God. Amen. We're going to the Word of God this morning. And as I sit this week and God began to talk to me, and one of the things that he talked about to me, and we talked about it in Bible class, that in these peerless days in which we live, and especially coming out of a 14, 15-month pandemic, for some reason or another, most people, most believers have found themselves distant from God. We have found ourselves watching worship on social media, but even though we are watching it, we still find ourselves in a place of discomfort because it's not like being in the body of Christ or being in the church itself. Somebody might as well say amen because when every time you try to enjoy God's word, somebody always trying to distract you. Amen. Y'all know the devil is like that. He does everything he can to keep you from getting the word that God has ordained for you to get. And so we are thankful to God that God has made a way for us to come back. And now it's up to us to get ourselves out of the way. Praise God. I'm going to say that twice. It's up to us to get ourselves out of the way and come back to the house of God. And so God saw it befitting this morning that I would preach to you a message from the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, now, in your leisure time. In your leisure time, we're asking that you would read the entire chapter. All right. It's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. When you have it, say amen. If you're still looking, say I'm still looking. Father God, we come now, we ask that you will bless this word, that you will bless the hearers of your word, that you will give us the heart 
the mind, the body, and the soul, that we might be receptive to your word and that we might be obedient to that that you have called us to do. It is in your name we pray. Move self out of the way. Speak to us and through us that the covenant of God might be received, that the lost might be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. The Word of God says in the King James Version, New King James Version, excuse me, Therefore, we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. I want you to underline that part, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels pro prove steadfast, and every transgression and, and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to speak by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, and with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Pay attention to verse 1, once again, where it says, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. This morning, I would like to talk to you by way of subject. If you don't mind, look at your neighbor and simply tell them, don't let it drift away. Don't let it drift away. As we look at this chapter this morning, this chapter here is solidifying the proof, the privilege, and the proclamation of salvation. Salvation, according to the dictionary, is the act of saving or protecting from harm, risk, loss, or disaster. It is a source, a cause, or means by being saved or protected from harm, risk, or etc. And the theological definition is that salvation is deliverance from the power and the penalty of sin. Salvation is simply redemption. As we look at this scripture this morning, this second chapter of the book of Hebrew, you will find out this is the first of five ammunitions found in the book of Hebrews. And in this book, you will find that Hebrew uses the ammunitions to uh, purposely encourage us, to encourage its readers that these ammunitions were simply warnings. You look up the word ammonitia, you will find out that it means simply it's a warning or reproof given by an ecclesiastical authority. It's a warning that it gives us. And in this book of Hebrew, he tells us to pay attention to the word of God. And not only does he tell us to pay attention to the word of God, Minister Corey, but he tells us to be obedient to what it says. As we study the book of Hebrew from beginning to the end, one can note that these admonitions would, these warnings that he, the writer, has given us. As the book continues to progress, Minister Corey, y'all don't mind if I teach for a few minutes. 
they began to get stronger and stronger. For in the beginning of the book, you will find that the people of God are drifting from the word of God. But as you move a little farther in the, in the dialogue of the book of Hebrews, you'll find out not only are they drifting away, but they are defying the word of God. You think I'm lying? Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 through 29. You'll find out not only had they drifted away, but they started being disobedient on purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, that sound like us. But one thing one must relish and understand, I feel like preaching. I got about 15 minutes. One must relish and understand that our God, the God who we serve, is not the kind of God, is not God that just sits back idle by and permit his children to be rebellious against his will and his way. I wish I had a witness in here. God continually speaks to us. He warns us. He's reproving us through his word. Week after week, he's giving us a message trying to give us the opportunity to repent from our sins. Preach, Pastor Long. And be restored back to our rightful place with God. Uh, but on the other hand, look at your neighbor and say, but on the other hand, the same God, he, if it is necessary, uh, the Bible say he will chastise you. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. He's not going to let you just be disobedient, not if you his child. He said, those I love are chasing. God chastises his own. Somebody said, what are you saying? Pastor Long, he afflicts his own for moral and spiritual purpose and improvement. Some of y'all might as well say, amen, God had to whoop your behind to get you in order. Some, some, somebody, I know a lot of times we want to blame the de devil uh, uh, for what you're going through, but sometimes God got to put you through something to make you realize and recognize that I am the I am, that I am the one, I am the bread of life, I am the, the seed, I am the one that, that you should give reverence to one way or another. And I need about three of y'all can attest that when you get knocked down far enough, you know how to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Is there ever anybody in here that ever had a whooping from the Lord? I'm old school. My mom and daddy would whoop our behind when we would get out of order. We didn't know nothing about a timeout. Touch your neighbor say, that's a new thing. Time out, time in. That was a game we played called tag. Do I have a witness? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. I wish I had more time, Maze. I, I, want, I feel like preaching this morning. Tells us you should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord, your God, chastens you. Therefore, watch this, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways and fear him. Look at your neighbor say, not only you got to walk in his ways, but you better fear him because God ain't nothing to play with. All right, uh -huh. If you feel like playing with something, you better go to Toys R Us and they out of business. Get you something to play with because the last thing you want to do is piss God off. Uh, look in the Old Testament. Every time the, the children of Israel were disobedient, God laid something on them. God caused calamities to come. God caused them to wander in the wilderness for their disobedience. And, and there are somebody right here in the church this morning and somebody that I'm pointing to on social media that are going through a crisis in your life because you're disobedient to God. 
Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it doesn't pay to be disobedient to God. I might have to preach part two on this. This warning that the Hebrew writer gives us, Dr. Mays, is not written uh, 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 for outsiders, but is written for the believers. Somebody said, well, how, do you, how can you say that, Pastor Long? Because the writer even includes himself. In the opening of the text, he used the word, the two-letter word, we. We simply means I can't point the finger at you. Without pointing the finger at myself, God delivered me from folk that's always telling you your problems. That always telling you your issues, but they never recognize their own issues. Yeah, I might smoke a little weed, but hell, you cuss everybody out. Come on, somebody help me. Yeah, I might do something. I might lie a little bit, but you messing around with somebody's husband and somebody's wife. Am I, am I preaching to somebody? The text says we, Dr. Mays. He said we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. Lest we, oh, I wish I could talk to these bishops and these pastors and apostles. Let them know, doesn't matter what kind of PhD degree you have, doesn't matter how many members you have, you can slip away just like a sinner can. Y'all better talk to David. David got to messing around with somebody else's wife and had the man killed. And the Bible said when he went back to church, he had lost his joy. Can I preach? The Bible said he looked up to heaven and said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thou. Salvation. Now let me know you can come to church uh, and, and, and leave here the same way you came. If your heart ain't right. Look at your neighbor and say, you better get your heart right. So he tells us. I'm running out of time already, Corey. <laughs> he, he tells us. He tells us to, to take heed to the word. Look at your neighbor and say, you got you to gotta pay attention to the word. He said, less, it drives us away. So what are these things that we are to take heed to? I'm glad you asked. Uh, Hebrew chapter 2 verse 3 gives us the answer. It says the truths are the truths of salvation. The truths uh, that we are to heed to is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor there's nothing like the word of the Lord. Because the gospel here is spoken by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Y'all see it right there in the text. Which is confirmed to us by those who heard it. And not only was it good because Jesus said it, but the disciples continue to carry the word. I need to park right there for a few minutes, Dr. Mays, and say, when was the last time you told somebody about the word of God? Ah, social media will be more popular if we get on there and use it for the right purpose. I wish I had a witness. I'm tired of turning it on and seeing people advertise, people beating up each other. People cussing each other out. It would be a good thing to use it for a positive method. And so we see here in the text that the writer of Hebrews shows us that there is a great danger here in neglecting our own salvation. Note that the writer did not uh, write the word rejecting, but he uses the word neglecting. Look at your neighbor, say, don't, 
neglect God's word. Hallelujah. He encourages uh, not the sinner to become a Christian, but on this text and in this text, he's simply encouraging Christians to pay great attention to the great gospel that we have received. And so, my brothers and sisters, he tells us to take heed to the word. And when you look up the word heed, it simply means to pay uh, close attention. And he didn't say just take heed, but he says take earnest heed. That means you got to go a little bit farther than just hearing. Do I have a witness? That means we ought to pay the utmost attention to the gospel and the message of Christ. My mama used to say it this way, Lord, let us be doers of the word and not hearers only. You see, my brothers and sisters, we need to listen more closely to the gospel than ever before. And this day and age in which we live these past 15 months have been months of turmoil, hell, and high water. Somebody ought to have been paying close attention to the word of God. Somebody ought to have been hearing what God has to say. And not only are we to listen, but we are to pay more attention to the gospel than ever before. In other words, we got to do what the gospel says and listen to the message of God. It's one thing for you to come to church Sunday after Sunday, simply sit in the audience and say amen. Go home and continue to do the same thing. But the Bible said God came that the word might bring change in our life. In other words, the old folks used to say it this way, things I used to do. I don't do no more. I got one person waving at me. The problem is nowadays is because those of us that are in the church, we feel as though we can do whatever we want to do. And we can say whatever we want to say. But I stopped by on my way to heaven to tell you this morning, stop allowing the devil to distract you. Stop allowing the devil to cause you to tune out the word of God. For the Bible said the word of God is a lamp at my feet and a light at my path. And the Bible says that only those who hear and obey the will and word of God shall live. Do I have a witness in here? Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, Not everything or everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he will uh, allow those that does the will of God. Them only shall enter his kingdom. So you see, my brothers and sisters, when we talk about the word of God, when we talk about the salvation of God, it is simply God's final revelation. It is simply God's final word to mankind. It is simply God's Amen, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. It is simply God's last chance for man. And he sends it by his only begotten son. Do I have a witness in here? And my brothers and sisters, as I hurry with my last five minutes, uh, salvation is a tool of God. And it is because of salvation that man has been delivered. Do I have a witness in here? It is because of salvation 
that man can now become acceptable to God and live eternally with the Lord. Do I have a witness in here? Look at your neighbor and say, it's because of salvation. Not only can man be acceptable to God, but because of salvation, do I have a witness? Man can now live a sober life. Man can live a righteous life. Do I have a witness in here? Even in a present world like this, we can live and still be a child of God. And not only that, but because of salvation, man have become more than a conqueror. We can stand through trial and tribulation. Do I have a witness in here? No bondage, no enslavement of sin can cause me to lose my salvation. I wish I had a witness in here. It is because of salvation that we can live a triumphant and abundant life right here, right now. Look at your neighbor and say, I can do all things uh, through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Look at your neighbor and say, if I were you today, I wouldn't let anything cause me to drift away. Do I have uh, a witness in here? And I'm just about uh, out of time. But on my way to heaven, I like to tell somebody, uh, I'm not going to let anything uh, drift me away from God. Uh, I'm not going to let anything uh, cause me uh, to lose my salvation. Do I have a witness in here? Because uh, he had brought me too far. Uh, for me to lose uh, my salvation. Uh, there is nothing, uh, preach past along, uh, that you can do to me uh, to knock me uh, off of my spot. Uh, grab your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, there's nothing uh, you can do uh, to turn uh, me away from God. Huh? Do I have a witness in here? Huh? Paul said, huh? who shall huh? separate us huh? from the love of God? Huh? He asked a question, huh? shall tribulation huh? or distress huh? or persecution huh? or famine or nakedness or peril or even Negroes cutting me with the sword of life but I heard Paul say as it is written for your sakes we are killed all the day long and we are counted sheep for the slaughter is there anybody hearing me but he says in verse 37 yet in all these things we are more than a conqueror grab your neighbor and say neighbor I'm more than a conqueror because I love Jesus. Tell your neighbor, no matter what it looks like, I'm going to make it by the love of God. Paul goes on, and I'm just about done to tell somebody I am, I am persuaded. 
that not even death grab your neighbor and say corona I really wasn't worried about it because if it took me out I got a seat up in heaven is there anybody hearing me grab your neighbor and say neighbor I wasn't worried about dying for the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord do I have a witness in this building today yes is there anybody ready to hear from heaven tell your neighbor not only death but he said no angels no principalities no powers can separate me from the love of God no things present no things past nothing can separate me from the love of God grab your neighbor and say neighbor nothing means nothing grab your neighbor and say neighbor the reason why I can't be moved because I'm anchored in Jesus he is my foundation do I have a witness I'm out of here somebody said how great is salvation salvation will deliver you from sin grab your neighbor say neighbor won't he won't he won't he deliver you salvation gives us a new heaven and a new earth do I have a witness salvation gives us a reward the Bible says when I get to heaven what a time what a time what a time old folks said you got a rope and I got a rope all of God's children got a rope when I get to heaven gonna put on my robe walk around heaven grab your neighbor and say neighbor salvation gave us the son of God salvation came up and said father prepare me a body that flows blood and water salvation said I gotta go down and redeem mankind salvation says take it down son salvation says not only do I'm going down but the Bible said he healed the sick and raise the dead salvation fair five thousand men not counting women and children hasta la vista arrivederci I got salvation and I come by to tell you like the Manhattan said don't let it drift away is there anybody just like me that's not gonna let your salvation drift away this cross I have I gotta bear it and in the morning when the saints go marching in I'll be in the number when the gates open I'll walk in say yes yes yeah
Give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Those of you that are at home. Those of you that are at home. Give him a praise. The Bible said how good and pleasant it is for brothering to dwell together in unity and in strength. I know you with me on social media, but the Bible said, fail not to assemble yourself together. I'm encouraging somebody right now that's listening, that's watching me today. You need to come to church. 
Because how many of you realize today, and I'm, and I'm out of time, how many of you realize today that the, the longer you stay away from church, the farther you drift away. Somebody said, well, how, how does a boat stay connected to the dock? It's, it's, it's simple, y'all. It gets to the dock and it throws the anchor down. <laughs> no matter how the wind blows. Oh, I need somebody to hear me today. I'm out of time. No matter how rough the sea gets, the boat might drift out a little way, but it ain't going nowhere because it's connected. I need about three of y'all to say I am connected. I'm connected. I'm connected. I'm connected to the anchor. That anchor holds the solid rock we used to sing a song that said be sure be very sure that your anchor holds the solid rock then it said the solid rock is Jesus he's the one the rock is Jesus God's only son as I leave you today as I leave you today at the end of this pandemic and I know we are out doing everything we are out at the malls now we are at the stores I, I see them out without their masks on praise God and we're, we're coming back to some type of recovery but the same people that left out of the church is no longer coming in the church because they have got accustomed to doing things their way and not doing things God's way. I'm leaving you with this. Just like God chastised the children in the Old Testament, don't you think for a minute, because of grace and mercy, that he's not going to chastise you. Whatever he has to do to get your attention, if you belong to him, he's going to do it. And you're going to eventually come to your senses and be like the prodigal son and say, I believe I better go home. The doors of the church is open. God bless you. Father God, as we come now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask in that you would send, send the Spirit of God into the life of every hearer of your word. We thank you for this word today. We thank you, dear God, that we find ourselves in a drifting position. But the good thing is, is that there is a coast guard. There's a lifeboat that Jesus commands that is out looking for those that have wandered out into utmost parts of the sea. And we're grateful to God if they would just hold up the light that the Coast Guard would save them and bring them back to safety. We thank you, dear God. We ask that you would touch right now every home, every voice, every person that is watching, every person that is listening, that you would draw us closer to your will. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. I stand before you and on behalf of our um, trustee department and our finance department. Um, I'm just here to remind you on last week, I know our errand did not um, load up correctly and we had technical difficulties. But last week was our last week for you to turn in your assessments. If you did not get a chance to um, put in your assessments last week, we will take them this week because of our technical issues. So please, um, if you would like to give towards the assessment, you may do so. Okay?
It's $300 was due by last Sunday, but again, we're extending it. It goes out until October, so you can continue to pay up until October. But if you want your first half of the money to be recorded for the first half, which was the $300 in total, you can turn it in this week um, via text at 313-855-5014. Again, by text at 313-855-5014. Or either you can bring it in or mail it in to 19130 Beaconsfield, Detroit, Michigan, 48224. We are here on Sundays between 10 and 12. You can drop it off at any time on Sunday between 10 and 12. Thank you. Be blessed. Let us stand. Let us stand. Praise God. God bless you. We thank you for your obedience. All right. God bless you. I am a steward. My life is a trust. I must give an account to God for my stewardship. Amen. You are dismissed.